practicing or when we're working on a difficult passage, we need to have a strategy in how to approach that. So today what I'm going to show you is some practice methods that I use to help me uh, be able to play technical passages better, uh, be able to play it smoother, and I'm going to be using the Krebs uh, Progressive Studies uh, to show you how I do that. So today I'm going to be using book two and join me and let's see what we can accomplish. Uh, progressive Studies uh, to show you some practice methods that I use to approach difficult passages. However, the whole point of this is to show you two things. Actually, uh, number one, the greatness of the Krebs Progressive Studies and how you can use them. But the other reason why is these practice techniques that I'm doing, you totally can use it in your repertoire, um, in your excerpts. So don't think that it's limited only to these exercises. So for example, in book one, I showed you how I approach the Krebs using twos, threes, and fours. I mentioned starting with quarter notes, playing eighth notes, then triplets, and then with uh, groupings of four, which is four sixteenth notes. Um, you can also do that with sixes and with eights, progressively getting uh, your faster divisions. But I just want you to know that these are things that you can use in your repertoire and your daily practicing for any etude, not only the Krebs. This is the passage that I've selected. Uh, this is from book two. We are in C minor. This is number 182. So just to let you know, um, again, each book has a certain amount of keys. So for example, um, book one has like zero to two to three flats and sharps, major and minor keys. Well, book two starts with, I believe, uh, three flats, right? So you're gonna be dealing with major and minor with three flats and they're gonna progress from there. So I'm choosing this one right here. This is number 182, page four. And, um, you know, I'm looking at this and, you know, this passage, maybe there's some tricky spots. So let me play it for you first. I'm just going to play it slowly so you could take a listen. And then I'm going to talk about the approach that I'm going to use and then demonstrate. I'm going to use quarter note equals 50. And we'll start from there. I always think it's better to start with a tempo that's slower. Uh, you know, you might be able to breeze through this tempo, but just in case, you know, we're going to start with a slower tempo and the whole goal is to have that accuracy. So there's nothing wrong with starting with a tempo that is slower than what you normally use and then progressing from there. And I'm actually going to play it in 16th notes. So I'm not going to, just as before in the other video, I'm not going to be doing a lot of the, um, let me turn this off so you can hear it, I'm not going to be doing a lot of the dynamics and stuff like that. I'm only focusing on getting my fingers in the right place and making sure that, you know, I have some smoothness within the intervals. So again, my focus is that evenness. With structure comes freedom. So if I'm able to get my fingers to do what I need it to do, then I'm gonna be able to progress forward with adding more of these musical touches like dynamics and articulation. So now that you've got an idea of the passage that I'm working on, let me show you the passage once more. It's right here. The passage that I'm in, the section that I'm going to focus on is the second measure. Now I want you to know that you don't have to do these techniques for the whole exercise or the, all of your music. Just pick the spots that you are having some technical challenges or maybe that it's not as smooth. So I'm going to focus on the second measure right here. So again, I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm going to focus on the second measure so you can get a chance to see how I am approaching this. I'm going to do something called add a note. Um, it's literally just what the title says, add a note. So add a note essentially is I play the first note of that section, then I play the second, then I play the third. However, the twist is, is that I go back to the first. 
I'm going to demonstrate for you right now. Whenever you're doing any kind of technical work, you always, always want to use the metronome. So um, make sure that you pick a tempo that's appropriate. And the focus, what your mind is going to be focusing on, is evenness, right? So we always want to make sure that we're focused on a particular goal. My goal is to be even and accurate. So if I have, if I have a little blip, then I, gotta, I either got to start over or focus on that little section. Okay, so I'm looking at the second measure, and instead of playing 16th notes, I'm going to be playing 8th notes for this tec technique. It's called add a note. I'm going to start with the, with the D natural, go to the E flat, back to the D natural, go back to then to the E flat, and then add the F, and then I'll go back to the E flat and the D, then D, E flat, F, G, da back descending to F, E flat, D, etc., etc. As you can see, I'm taking my time. I have the structure of the quarter note equals 50. I'm doing it in eighth notes. I'm taking my time and I'm noticing, okay, how are my fingers working? I suggest also to add to um, the accuracy, have a mirror if you can, and take a look at your fingers and see what's going on. I think that's a great way to um, minimize any distractions. I think it's a great way to, um, let me shut up the metro. I'm, I'm so bad about that. Um, I think it's also a great way to be um, more, uh, like, how can I say this? It's a great way to be more efficient um, because usually the hangups that we deal with are technical and our fingers aren't exactly working the way we need it to. So by having a mirror, it can help. So metronome and a mirror are great tools to use in your practicing. So the next step is, now that I've done eighth notes and I've added a note each time, now I'm going to up the, the division, not the tempo, but the division. Um, in this case, I'm going to, I started with eighths, now I'm going to see if I can do sixteenths. So far, so good. So you notice I'm ascending, right? I'm going up the passage. However, uh, most passages have a type of contour. So another thing that I like to do is also to accentuate the descending portion of the passage. Let me show you again so you know what I'm talking about. So here I was focusing on adding a note up to the F. The F is the peak area, and now what I'm going to do is the same thing, eighth notes and sixteenths, descending. right there. I just played a wrong note. So if you make a mistake, make sure that you don't ignore it. Make sure that you address it. How do you address it? You go back to it again. Okay, so I have three flats, which means that A has to be flat. So I'm gonna do it again. So if you make a mistake, don't just breeze right through it and act like it's not a big deal. The whole point of practicing is that it's your time to focus and work on your stuff. So let's do it again. 
So just a reminder, I'm starting on my peak note, which is that F natural, and I'm descending all the way to that D. I did the passage again, this time I wanted to show you how I transitioned from 8th note to 16th. So once you've accomplished that and you see, okay, all the notes are correct, it was smooth, the next thing you're going to do is up your tempo. So I had quarter note equals, let's check, quarter note equals 50, well, you know what, maybe it's, you can try quarter note equals 56, or maybe you can jump it to quarter note equals 60. Do the same thing eighth notes and sixteenths and if that goes well you could up the pat up the tempo or you can drop the tempo a little bit maybe you could drop it by four to four clicks play through it and then add on uh, maybe 10 or 15 uh, higher notches and practice it that way so it's up to you as long as you're accomplishing the goal of having your fingers move appropriately your, your fingers are close enough to the clarinet that you can play smoothly and that your air is working properly and that you're playing everything cleanly. Then you can start adding in more layers like the dynamics, uh, articulation, stuff like that. Alright guys, so I hope that was helpful. I hope that you can give it a shot and try it in your practicing and let me know how it works out and if you're liking these videos and you are enjoying you know these practice techniques or learning more about HE books and technique books or just about the clarinet in general subscribe you know send me a message uh, put a, a, a comment on the description box and let me know what you think thanks everybody bye